Christ is the new kind of man, the firstborn of all creation. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, the King James Version reads, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. The True Bible Study translation reads, Who is the image of God the unseen? firstborn of all creation, because all things were created in him, in the heavens and on the earth, the seen things and the unseen things, whether thrones or lordships or rulerships or authorities, because all things were created by means of him and into him, and he is before all things, and all things stood together in him. The Lord Jesus Christ presently exists being the image of God, God's icon, resemblance, representation, because God gave him the spirit of holiness when he raised him up alive from being dead. You can refer to Romans chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. The Lord Jesus Christ is the image of God who is unseen. God himself is not perceived by the eyes of mankind so as to understand him in the mind's thoughts as a result of physical sight. God, who is Holy Spirit, cannot be seen by fallen mankind. But the Lord Jesus Christ has been seen and will be seen with the physical eyes of fallen mankind. And he is the firstborn, the first one born, begotten, given birth to, of all creation, relative to all of God's new creation what God has brought into being or established, and it is still in progress at the present time, pertaining to the kingdom of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not referring to the old, fallen creation. This statement of Christ being firstborn of all creation refers to when God raised him up alive, giving him his new heavenly spiritual body, and thereby receiving God's life, Holy Spirit life, permanently. Thus the resurrected Christ became God's firstborn son permanently within God's kingdom, his kingly or royal dominion, government and rule, authority, territory, power, which God placed under Christ's authority in the kingdom of God's loved son. Refer to Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. There have been others since the day of Pentecost who became born by receiving the gift of Holy Spirit, thereby becoming Christians. And there will also be others born of all creation at a future time. But there can only be one firstborn. Christ is God's firstborn son, and therefore he has received all the rights of this privileged position permanently. The new creation encompasses the truth that all things, everything regarding God's new creation pertaining to the kingdom of his Son, were created in him, caused by God to be created in Christ in the heavens, literally referring to anywhere above the earth, but the plural form is figuratively referring to God's spirit realm, and on earth, literally referring to the area of the earth, but figuratively referring to those living in the earthly realm, the seen things, the things which are perceived by the eyes of mankind, so as to understand them in the mind's thoughts as a result of physical sight, and unseen things, whether thrones, the high seats designated for kings, and so would include all the regal authority associated with that position, or lordships, masterships, dominions, or rulerships, chiefs, first-placed or dignified hierarchical positions, or authorities, authoritative powers, or permitted rights, because all things were created and continue created by means of him, through, by way of, Christ, and into him, with a view to Christ, and emphatically he is, he himself is, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
He is before all things, ahead of everything, all of the things of God's creation. Again, it's pertaining to the kingdom of his son with respect to place, position, superiority, rank, and all the things stood together and continue standing together in him. They are standing in conjunction with themselves. Everything stands together. How? Within the Christ. The resurrected Christ is above all, excluding God his Father. But this does not mean that Christ is controlling everything that any person or spirit does during the present age. Everyone has been given freedom of will to believe and obey what God and the Lord Jesus Christ give to believe and obey. And in the future, everyone will receive a righteous outcome of their decision from God and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only by the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ that the present fallen world continues to exist. For without Christ, all of what God created, including mankind, would have been destroyed by God himself in righteous judgment because of the creation's unbelief and rejection of God's words to his creation. As written in Second Peter chapter 3 and verses 1 to 7, the current heavens and the earth are being kept in store into the day of judgment and destruction with fire of the people who are not reverential. The resurrected Christ is the Son of God, and he is the second and last man, the new genus of mankind, the new kind of human being. Also refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 to 48. Christ is the beginning, firstborn, first in all things. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. The King James Version reads, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. The True Bible Study translation reads, And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, firstborn of the dead people, in order that he may become being first in all things, because he considered it good to dwell down all the fullness in him and to fully reconcile all things by means of him into himself, having made peace by means of the blood of his cross, even by means of him, whether the things on the earth or the things in the heavens. The Lord Jesus Christ is the beginning, the original part of the process, the first time-wise, implying others are or will be after him, more towards the end. He is the initial starting point, the rulership, because of being in the first place position of dignity relative to everything that came and still comes after or later than him pertaining to God's new creation. The Lord Jesus Christ is the beginning, firstborn, the first one born, begotten, given birth to, brought forth. Also, you can refer to Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. He is the firstborn of the dead people relative to those who are dead. Jesus Christ is the first and only human being at this point in time whom God has made alive by giving him his heavenly spiritual body. And the resurrected Christ will never die for the purpose and result that emphatically he would become. He himself would come to pass to be being first. The first one, the point of origin, holding the first place, the one being in the foremost or highest, in dignity, rank, order, precedence, the one being preeminent in all things, everything, all of the things relative to God's creation pertaining to the kingdom of his Son. Again, you can refer to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Because God considered it good, God supposed it to be well to dwell down 
to permanently dwell, settle down, house or inhabit all the fullness, every part of the filling, the full contents proceeding from God, in Him, in Christ. This does not mean that God is squashed inside of Christ, but it means that all the fullness from God, including God's authority and power, is within Christ's sphere of action. This fullness is available for Christ to use. And God considered it good to fully reconcile all things, to cause everything, including mankind, to change away from their former relationship with God in response to an action on God's part by means of Christ, through Christ, who helps bring about the full reconciliation into himself, who directed to God, for God himself, having made peace after Christ brought about or produced tranquil harmony, tranquility, peaceful wholeness, without any strife or disagreement, by means of the blood of his cross, through the shedding of his blood, because he was the sacrifice hung on the cross, which was a type of death designated for criminals, the catalyst that made the reconnection with God available to fallen mankind was through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, emphatically by means of him, Christ. Whether the things on the earth, referring to those living in the earthly realm, or the things in the heavens, figuratively referring to God's spirit realm, Jesus Christ was put to death by crucifixion. He died, and he was buried, and he stayed dead for three days and three nights. Then God graciously raised him up alive from among the rest of the dead people, and God gave to him a new heavenly spiritual body. Christ is the new kind of man that God has created. Christ now has his new body with its life-making spirit. And he has the ability to cause others to be made alive as he is at a future time. Since the day of Pentecost, recorded in Acts chapter 2, everyone who believes what God says regarding the Lord Jesus Christ, refer to Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 10, becomes a limb of Christ's one spiritual body by receiving Holy Spirit life, thereby becoming fully reconciled to God.